Hello girls, I hope you're staying safe at home. To continue with water chapter, today we are going to discuss as a universal solvent. Now universal means almost everything, okay? And solvent means a liquid in which different substances are dissolved. So water is a very good solvent. It dissolves different many substances in it, forming an aqueous solution. So aqueous solution means dissolved in water. If I talk about aqueous sodium chloride, I'm not talking about solid sodium chloride. I'm talking about sodium chloride, which is dissolved in water. And it is not only solids, but also gases and liquids that dissolve in water. So it is very, very difficult to find very pure water in nature. So that is why water is known as a universal solvent. Okay. Now water has a high dielectric constant. Now dielectric constant means you know that water is made up of two atoms of hydrogen and one atom of oxygen and there is a very strong bond between hydrogen and oxygen in water. So it has a high dielectric constant because of the strong bond between hydrogen and oxygen. So this large dielectric constant means that substances whose molecules contain ionic bond, I just told you about sodium chloride, so they have ionic bond between them. Sodium is positive and chlorine is negative. So what type of bond is between sodium and chlorine? Uh, ionic bond is between them. So this will dissolve in water. If we put it in water, it will dissolve in water. It will dissociate in water, um, which and the solution will contain iron. What ions will it contain? It will contain sodium ion and chlorine ions. Okay. So substances which are apparently insoluble in water. Apparently means like it, you look at a substance and you feel it will not dissolve in water. Now for example, do you think glass is going to dissolve in water? No. Okay. But when we put water in a glass vessel an extremely small amount of glass dissolves in it so it is for this reason that when distilled water is kept in a sealed bottle for a very long time it leaves etchings or markings on the inside of the glass surface actually these markings are there why because little bit of glass has dissolved in the distilled water okay now let us talk about an experiment to show that ordinary tap water contains dissolved solids. Now the procedure is to put some tap water on a clean watch glass and you place it over a beaker. So there you can see this is the beaker here and water is there inside the beaker. We heat it and then what do we put over the beaker? The watch glass. This is the watch glass here. Okay and what is there in the watch glass? tap water is there. So we boil the water in the beaker, we heat the beaker from here, water will start boiling and because of the heat here, what will happen? We cannot place a watch glass directly over water because it is very fragile, it will easily crack. So that is why we are placing it over a water bath. This is known as a water bath where water is boiling in a boiler, I mean in a beaker and then uh, we place some other um, container over it. So in this case what have we placed? We have placed a watch glass. So after some time all the water will evaporate from the glass uh, watch glass and we remove it and we let it cool. Okay now what will the observation be? On looking at the watch glass against light you just hold it right up with your hands and look it against the light you will see a number of concentric rings there concentric rings of solid matter are seen. That means it has an accumulated in concentric rings. Concentric means round, round, like exactly like this. So these are the dissolved solids left behind after evaporation of water. Please remember tap water, river water, well water contain dissolved solids but Rain water and distilled water do not contain dissolved solid. So concentric rings will not be formed if you take rain water or distilled water and evaporate it in the same way in a watch glass. Okay. Now 
Dissolved salts are important. Why? Because the dissolved salts are solids in water are salts, minerals and impurities. Okay, salts and minerals are required for growth and development of plants. They also add taste to water and they give essential minerals needed by our bodies. Okay, now air that is dissolved in water also gives taste to water out of the two main components of air nitrogen and oxygen oxygen is more soluble in water than nitrogen now as i already told you that oxygen is more soluble in water compared to nitrogen so remember composition of the air dissolved in water is completely differ different from ordinary air okay so the composition of air dissolved in water is 33 percent oxygen compared to 21 percent in ordinary air so in air there is only 21 percent oxygen but in water you will see that it is 33 percent okay and 66 percent nitrogen and one percent carbon dioxide another experiment to show that tap water contains dissolved gases first what do we take we take a round bottom flask this is the round bottom flask and you can see it is completely filled with tap water okay and then you can see there is a bent delivery tube leading over to a gas jar which has markings on it this is known as a graduated tube okay so uh, and remember in the beginning of the experiment this graduated tube is completely filled with water okay right up till here it is completely filled with water so what do we do we heat the water in the flask so what will your observation be? You will see bubbles okay, arising and very soon what will happen? The level of water will start dropping down. Okay, So gas bubbles are seen escaping from the water and they are collected in the graduated tube by the downward displacement of water. Okay, The water vapor which is found in the gases condensed in coming uh, on contact with the cold water in the tube. So the remaining gases come from the air dissolved in water and they escape on heating. So we will read the volume of the gas thus collected. So in this case, total if it was 100, how much of gas has collected? 20. Okay, so the volume of the gas or air collected in the graduated tube shows that dissolved gases are present in tap water okay now the solubility of a gas that means how much gas has dissolved in water is expressed by the volume of that gas dissolved in a certain volume of a solvent for example the solubility of hydrogen in water is expressed as 0 0.02 volume of hydrogen per unit volume of water at 0 degree celsius or 506 volumes of hydrogen chloride per unit volume of water at 0 degree Celsius. So we are talking about two different gases. First, I told you about hydrogen and the second one is hydrogen chloride. So you can see the solubility hydrogen very less will dissolve in water, but lots of hydrogen chloride will dissolve in water. See, just compare 0 0.02 and 506 volumes. You can see lots of hydrogen chloride can dissolve in water okay and remember the gases dissolved in water can easily be thrown out by boiling the water once the water boils the gases will be expelled out remember children distilled water and boiled water do not have any taste why because all the gases have been expelled out the remember the pleasant taste or the nice taste the sweet taste of drinking water is due to the presence of dissolved matter like air carbon dioxide and minerals so when air and carbon dioxide is expelled out after boiling the boiled water will have a flat taste so what are the importance of air dissolved in water air dissolved in water is biologically very very important because you know there is life in water marine life in the sea 
like fish they use the oxygen of the air dissolved in water for respiration so aquatic life will go on it is sustained okay one decimeter cube or one liter of water contains nearly 40 centimeter cube of dissolved oxygen and i already told you this oxygen is used by marine life that is life that is under the water and next is there are aquatic plants also you know that in water so they will perform photosynthesis and so they will use the dissolved carbon dioxide to prepare their food and this is the equation you know that okay next carbon dioxide dissolved in water reacts with limestone okay limestone is calcium carbonate carbon dioxide in water it forms calcium bicarbonate okay you have seen shells on marine um, life like snails are there oysters are there so these uh, you know shells are made from calcium carbonate and it is taken from calcium bicarbonate that is formed here because you know carbon dioxide in water will use the limestone to make calcium bicarbonate which is in turn is used by certain marine organisms like snails and oysters to make their shells okay children this is all for today in the next upload we are going to learn about solutions okay and your assignment for today is um, the two experiments that we discussed that is the first one to show that ordinary tap water contains dissolved solids and the second one to show that tap water contains dissolved gases you will draw and describe the two experiments and you will submit it on Saturday that is 25th of July till then children stay safe God bless you